So a few months ago, Insta360 released their new webcams, the Insta360 Link 2 and the Link 2C, and I've been really wanting to test them out. For me, I always use the Sony a7S III or my MacBook Pro as my webcam. But here's the thing, both of my desk setups don't have a dedicated webcam, and it can definitely be a pain trying to set up my a7S III every single time I need to hop on a meeting. So I'm excited about these webcams, but my main criteria is image quality and convenience. How does this stack up in comparison to the MacBook Pro? The MacBook Pro is really easy to set up, but it lacks image quality. And how does it stack up to my Sony a7S III, which is extremely painful to set up, but the image quality is amazing. Are these gonna be the perfect happy medium? Let's see. Out of the box, both webcams come with the webcam itself and this really cool magnetic mount that both the webcams can actually attach magnetically to. And the really cool thing about the mount is that it folds out so that it can easily sit on top of your monitor, but it also has a quarter 20 thread here at the bottom. So if you wanna mount it to like a tripod or some of the accessories that Insta360 sells on their website, for example, they sent me this mini two in one tripod that will allow you to sort of mount it on your desk, maybe to the side of your monitor if you don't wanna sit it on top. And you can also turn it vertically so that you can have vertical resolution when you're using the webcam, which we'll get into that in a little bit. It also comes with a decently long USB-C cable for both powering the webcams and also connecting them to your computer. And then a USB-C to USB-A adapter. And lastly, some documentation with some Insta360 stickers. And then these stickers that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. So for the cameras themselves, they both have the same half inch sensor that can record up to 4K at 30 frames per second. They're pretty much the same exact camera with the main difference being that the Insta360 Link 2 has a gimbal and the Insta360 Link 2C does not. It's just a standalone webcam. And the price for the Insta360 Link 2 is 199 US dollars, whereas the 2C is 149 US dollars. And setting these up was extremely easy. All I did was just open up the mounts, place them right on top of my monitor and then plug them directly into my MacBook Pro. And then I downloaded the NC360 Link controller software, downloaded some updates for each of the webcams, and we're good to go. Hey, if you're also interested in the wallpapers that are on my Mac setup and my PC setup, I actually partnered up with Clean Desk Setup to bring you guys the essential wallpaper pack 100% free. And this comes with 20 100% human design wallpapers optimized for your desk setup and your mobile device in 6K resolution. And again, they're 100% free, all 20 wallpapers. And if you find more that you like on the website, you can use my code WILL20 to get 20% off your entire order. And that just helps support the channel, but also gets you some really cool wallpapers at a sweet discount. So go check out the links in the description. And let's get back to the video. Like I mentioned before, both cameras have the same exact sensor, so image quality is going to be the exact same. But for the sake of doing it, I'll show you the two side by side. And really, the only difference in image quality is that the Insta360 Link 2 obviously sits a little bit higher on your monitor because of the gimbal. Other than that, it's the exact same sensor, so you're going to get the exact same image. The quality is pretty solid for a webcam. They also have an HDR mode that helps if the windows behind you are blown out. It helps sort of to even everything out. And to give you some context of what you're seeing on the screen, I'm actually next to a window in my studio, but I have some other other lights on in the space so it's sort of a manufactured setting but for most people if you work from home or you're not in like a studio setting like this here's an example of what it would look like maybe you're in a living room setup and you're working from home and you're next to a window i think the cameras do a really good job of balancing the image so wherever you're at the quality should look good now speaking of image quality the a7s3 definitely is in a league of its own in terms of quality they're just two different cameras i mean this is a complete mirrorless camera whereas this is just a webcam so they're not supposed to compete but for the macbook pro i personally think that the instant 360 link two cameras win in this category but let me know what you think in the comments below now in the link controller app you can adjust the resolution of the camera and you can also adjust the image here in this tab with adjustments for exposure and white balance and for most people you should leave this on auto and i have personally adjusted a few things to get a better image to my liking but for most people you're just going to want to leave this on auto you also have the options to have fake backgrounds add makeup effects and even custom looks to your image and i personally leave all of these off but hey they're here if you need them so both cameras have phase detection autofocus and just like a mirrorless camera, if you hold up something in front of it, it's gonna automatically focus on it. And then when you take it away, it's gonna focus back on you. Both of these cameras do the exact same thing. The focusing registers very quickly and it's pretty much the same as what I'm seeing on my Sony a7S III. So here's what the audio sounds like coming into the Rode pod mic. And now here's what the audio sounds like coming into the Insta360 Link 2. So you have three audio modes in the app. The first one is called Voice Focus, and it's supposed to focus on your voice while reducing some of the background noise. And this is what it sounds like. The next is called Voice Suppression, and it's supposed to make your voice a lot richer and clearer, and it's for more noisy environments. Maybe you're in a coffee shop or a very noisy office. This would be the one that you would use. And the last one is called Music Balance, and it's supposed to balance your voice with any background music that you may have playing. For example, if I was to turn on some music from Epidemic Sound, 
sound and I had it playing in the background and I was talking on camera, it's supposed to balance the music and my voice at the same time to keep them sort of even. And here's what it sounds like. So straight into camera, I think it sounds great, but it's obviously never gonna beat something like the Rode Pod Mic. I always recommend a mic setup, whether it's something like this or something similar. For most people, you're gonna be just fine using the built-in mics on the webcams. Both webcams come with some AI auto tracking features and the Insta360 Link 2, since it has a gimbal, it actually utilizes that gimbal to follow you around your room. It follows pretty well, but if you move quick enough, it's easy to make it lose you and you'll need to step back and frame for it to register the tracking again. For the Link 2C, it uses auto reframing, so you're limited to what you see on the screen, but it can still follow you around and keep you in frame. You can trigger the tracking by holding up your palm like this, and the Link 2 also has a touch button on the gimbal to start and stop tracking. You can also set where you want it to track your full body, half of your body, and even your head. Now, both of these can track individuals and groups, but the Link 2 has a special feature called Pause Track Area, where you can freeze the tracking near specific spots in your shot, and then when you leave, it will resume tracking you again. Aside from these AI features, there are other smart modes too that are built into the webcams and the software. There's Desk View Mode, which is great for showing sort of a top-down shot of your desk and the Link 2 will automatically tilt down towards your desk when you trigger desk view. But for the 2C, you have to manually tilt the webcam down towards your desk for it to work properly. And then there's whiteboard mode. And as I mentioned earlier, there are these specific stickers that come inside of the pamphlet whenever you unbox your webcams. And essentially what you do is you put these on the four corners of your whiteboard. And what it's supposed to do is increase the clarity of your whiteboard or maybe your notebook whenever maybe you're doing a presentation or you're teaching a class. I don't have a whiteboard here, but it sort of does the same thing on this notebook. You can also talk with this by holding up the peace gesture and it's pretty seamless to start whiteboard mode. There's also other gesture modes. If you hold up the L sign and bring it up, it'll zoom in. And then if you bring it down, it'll zoom back out. And then there's portrait mode. So if you use a mount like this and you turn the cameras sideways, it has native nine by 16 support. So you get the full resolution uncropped for vertical content. So this is great for social media or if you just need to be on a meeting in vertical resolution. And then one important feature for privacy for the Insta360 Link 2C, there's actually a manual privacy shield right here on the side of the camera. So if you toggle this down, you can cover the webcam completely. Now for the Link 2C, after about 10 seconds of inactivity, it'll actually tilt all the way down automatically or you can forcefully tilt it down and it'll register that you want to turn on privacy mode. You can also control the webcams from your phone. So if you scan this QR code in the top right of the app, it'll bring you to this link to where you can wirelessly control your webcams. And in my case, for the Insta360 Link 2, I can control the gimbal. And for both of the webcams, you can toggle single tracking, group tracking. You can even toggle whiteboard mode and even desk view mode. You basically have most of the settings you have in the desktop app right here on the mobile device. And then your effects like your exposure, your color temperature, and even your backgrounds. And lastly, both cameras are compatible with all major video conferencing platforms like Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, and Zoom. So all in all, they're great cameras and they're feature packed and the image quality to me looks great, especially compared to the MacBook Pro. But again, it's not going to beat the Sony a7S III. The Sony a7S III wins in the best of image quality category, but like I said, it's definitely a pain to set up. And the MacBook Pro is easy to use. You just flip it open and boom, you're ready to go. But the quality is lacking in terms of image. And then for these, the Insta360 Link 2 and the 2C, I think this is the perfect middle ground for a great webcam. For me, I'm probably just gonna use these for every single Zoom meeting that I have to get on and then use the Sony a7S III if I want a specific look. And if I had to purchase one of these myself, I'd personally go with the Link 2C because I don't really need the AI tracking features, but if you're someone that's a teacher or maybe you do video conferencing calls where you need to move around your room or your office i could see how this could be great for you because it has a full range of tracking and it can pretty much track you around your entire room in that case the link 2 is definitely worth the extra 50 dollars. but for me the link 2c being at 149 us dollars it's a no-brainer. So if you're interested in the Insta360 Link 2 or the Link 2C, check out the links in the description where you can pick one up for yourself. Also, I'll leave some recommendations of maybe some other brands or other webcams that are out there so you can do some research for yourself and find the best option that works for you. This is actually the last video of the year, and I've really enjoyed reviewing tech like this, so look forward to more of that on the channel next year. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.